Well, welcome and hello to all of you. Welcome to Classroom 2O Live. Today is Saturday, December 10th, 2011, and we have a really exciting show for you today on a topic that many of, of you have been asking for and eagerly looking forward to. Our topic today is differentiating with live scribe smart pens. And our special guests are Aviva Dunziger and Sue Glasgow, as well as several other live scribe enthusiastic ambassadors. And they will be joining us both in the chat during the session and on the mic as we get into the Q&A time. Lorna first began talking with Zoe Brannigan Pipe way back in September about coming on our show to talk about the LiveScribe Smart Pen. And we're so excited that we're finally able to share this with you today. Um, I'm going to do just a quick intro of our special guests, and then I am going to go through a quick intro to Blackboard Collaborate. I'm sure that some of you, many of you, are already familiar with Blackboard Collaborate, but in case you're new, it helps to have just a bit of an idea of what to expect. There is an audio video window up at the top, and if you have that drop down um, window open, you'll be able to see the profile picture of anyone who is on the mic at that time. If they haven't created a profile, you won't be seeing their picture there. We don't use the video webcam during our sessions because it requires a lot of bandwidth and that causes problems for some of you. So um, you can choose to keep that window open or closed. I'm going to also grab a, a hand here so I can just show you where I'm talking about. Down below the audio video window is a list of participants. You should see your name there as well as the names of everyone else who is in the room. And just to the right of that are the whiteboard tools, which you'll see and you will use when we get to the part of the map and ask you to put a little starburst there, which is right here, uh, where, to tell us where you're located. Also, down below that is the chat window. Now, that's the default position for the chat window. And I want to quickly show you that there's another position you might want to go to that <clears throat> will um, help you view the chat better. Now, in this slide, you can see I've kind of pulled these windows out. So now the participants' windows over here and these are multiple copies of the participant's window. It isn't really important to move that one, but the supervised chat window is one I think you're going to want to use. It's called supervised chat, just so you know that everything that you write in the chat, even if it's private, will be seen by moderators. But I like to move my chat window over here to the right of the whiteboard. Then you can go down here and stretch it out and make it fill the whole size of your screen. So that's a great way to see more of the chat at one time. As you can see over here, if you keep it in this little box, that's all you're going to be able to see. And I know that this chat room is going to be very active today, and you're going to want to see more of it. That's really similar to what you see or you used to see in Illuminate when you went to the wide layout. So you can just click on the heading there and drag that over to the right wherever you'd like to have it. And I'm going to skip over this part about the chat window. If you happen to see a name pop up at the bottom of your chat window, it means that someone's sending you a private message and you will go click on that. But generally, we'll be staying in the main room. Now, these are whiteboard tools, and the pointer is right here. It's very enlarged, but there's a little starburst burst there. When you click on that, you'll have some choices of which um, emoticon you want to use. When we get to the map, we're going to ask you to use that starburst. And we're not going to be using the text tools except to type in the chat. So. Um, 
you won't need to worry about that. We do record all of our sessions and post them in our archives and resources page, and we'll be dropping that link in the chat as we go along. Also, we have a live binder specially created for this show that is filled with tons of great resources for you about LiveScribe smart pens and other kinds of screencasting as well. So we'll be posting the recording of this session as soon as the show is over and you'll be able to access that all on our um, blog. And now we're at the point where we get to see where all of you are located. So I'd like for you to go over there to those tools, find that starburst, and place it on the map where you're located. I'm joining you from Phoenix, Arizona today, and I have my starburst up there. And you just click on the map wherever you're located. If it doesn't go right where you want it, you can click on it and drag it to the place that you really do want it. Sometimes it has a mind of its own and it just drops out in the ocean somewhere or way over in another country. So you can just click and drag that right up to your location. Now I know we have a lot more people in the room than the number of starbursts we're seeing here. So be sure to go find that tool and it's right there in that um, toolbar just to the left of the whiteboard. Now I'm seeing some more come up. It is so great to have all of you here joining us. Perfect. And be sure to type in the chat where you're located too because we get an idea of your general area with the map, but we don't get to know exactly where you are. Thank you so much for doing that for us. And I'm going to move right along because now I'd like to quickly introduce our special guests and turn this over to them. As I told you, Lorna first started talking to Zoe Brannigan Pipe way back in September about doing this show. So today, um, we not only have Aviva Dunsinger with us, who is a grade one, two teacher in Ancaster, Ontario. And if you know anything about her, or if you happen to um, hear one of our featured teacher sessions a while back, you got to hear her talk about all of the things she's doing in her classroom with Web 2.0 tools and social media. If you haven't seen that, be sure and go back and watch that recording and take a look at her blogs. And she has a couple of blogs that are listed in our live binder today. We also have a number of people who are here with us today who are LiveScribe educational board members, which means they're teachers using LiveScribe and they're blogging regularly about the things they're doing. So we're looking forward to hearing from them later too. But we also have another special guest who's presenting with us today. And I am so excited to introduce you to Sue Glasgow. Sue is a math instructor at Mesa Community College, yay, in Arizona. And it was so thrilling to find out that our special guest was right here in the valley with me. So she and I have plans to connect later. She also is a member of the Live Scribe Educational Advisory Board, along with Zoe and Aviva. She teaches hybrid math classes using lots of tech tools, and you'll be able to see her blogs in our live binder. She also trains K through 14 teachers to teach with technology. So I want to say welcome to all of you. I am so sorry that Zoe isn't able to be with us today. Zoe has been the, the leader behind the scenes in all of this. And unfortunately, just a, a couple of days ago, her um, uh, she had a death in her family. And so she may be able to pop in the room with us. We're not sure, but we do want to say thanks to Zoe. And we've included a number of her blogs and sites in our live binder too, so you can learn from her after the show. So with that said, I want to turn the mic over to Sue, who is going to do a quick intro about the LiveScribe pen and then move right into our presentation. So welcome to all of you.
Okay, I'm I'm slow on the uptake. Sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start with what is a LiveScribe pen? So I'm going to have to ask here, how do I move the slide? It's not going. There we go. Oh, let's do the poll question. So I'll do the poll questions. All right, so let's start there. Have you guys ever used a LiveScribe smart pen to create a pen cast? And so what you want to do then is you have your little tools over underneath your name, and you want to either check yes or no. And it looks like it's about even. Here, we have 10 and 10. All right, so not everybody's answered, but that's pretty good. And then let's go to the next poll question. Have you ever done a podcast? And again, go ahead and check the green for yes and the X for no. I'm going much faster this time. So most people have done a podcast in here. Now I'm thinking a podcast is just sound as opposed to a screencast, which would be like video, but I think you could count that as yes too. So, all right, and then the next poll question says, do you use blended learning platform? So that would be some online, some technology, uh, and some face-to-face, -face, some handwritten stuff. So, wow, we have the yeses are overruling the noes here. So, wow, most people in the room here have, have used a blended learning platform. Great. Well, that gives us a good start for following up on what actually a LiveScribe pen is. Let's see, is there, that's where we're going to start then. So, if you look at this picture here, uh, the LiveScribe pen looks like almost any other pen except for it's a portable computer. It's basically what it is. And if you use it with a special dot paper, which you can see here, uh, it not only allows you to write normally, just like you're writing on paper, but it records the sound at the same time. So the sound's going to be associated with each location on the paper, meaning that when I'm finished writing on the paper while I was speaking, then I can go back and tap anywhere on the paper uh, with my pen, and it'll replay the recorded sound from that word on the paper. And then when you connect it to a computer, it becomes what's called a pen cast. And so it's an animated uh, video, basically, with sound. And so you can interact with it anywhere on the screen as well. And then uh, it's also like a computer because it has applications that you can add to it. For example, you can add a uh, full Spanish dictionary. So it even recognizes my handwriting, which is surprising. and then. It'll take the English word that I wrote, and it'll not only tell me the Spanish word, but it'll say it with a little Spanish accent, and then it'll define it. So there's all sorts of neat applications, and I teach math, so there's some great applications for math as well. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what a smart pen is. All right, now for the newbie question. Every week they start off with a newbie question. So the newbie question this week is, what is a pen cast, and how is it like a screencast? Well, a pencast is you're basically taking a screencast of your piece of paper. So as you're talking and you're writing, then when you upload it to the computer, it becomes an animated, like a, a screencast. But the nice thing is it's very interactive. It's not linear like a movie where you have to start the end, the front and go to the end. You can tap anywhere within the screencast and be able to play it. So what I wanted to do is just show you an example of what a screencast is so that the rest of this session will make more sense. So let me go over here. And okay, that wasn't, there it is. Okay, so you should see a page that says LiveScribe on it, and it says solving absolute value. So go ahead and hit full screen so that it goes to a full screen, and then tap on the play and listen to it. And I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Oops, did I mess it up? Can you not see mine anymore? All right, sorry about that. Ah. 
All right. It's not. We may have to come back. We may have to come back to this. So let me go back to here and try one more time. There we go. Okay. Now it should come up. Okay. So now you should see it. So go ahead and hit play. Now let's try one that's a little bit harder. Let's start with the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 2 equals 9. All right, the first thing we need to notice is that the absolute value is not by itself. And so 9 is not the distance. So we need to isolate the absolute value by subtracting 2 from both sides which leaves us with the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 7. So if you want to think okay. about it well, as a distance, then you'd have to rewrite this as later. x so minus I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main screen here. And so that was just an introduction. Um, so some of you are used to seeing screencasts. Again, they're like movies. But uh, this is quite different because you can jump around on the page. And it's much easier because you can just create it from a pen and from paper. And so you're going to get a lot of your teachers who are not as willing to do technology, you're going to get them in the door with this one. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Aviva. And they did already tell you a little bit about Aviva, so she's amazing. And uh, I'm going to give her the mic, and she's going to tell a little bit about how she and Zoe have been using it. Uh, thanks, Sue. Uh, can everyone here hear me? I just want to make sure that my volume's okay. Your volume is awesome. great. It's great. Perfect. Um, anyways, um, what I'm trying to do today is I'm going to talk quite a bit about how uh, Zoe has been using this, as well as how I've kind of adapted it for my grade one, two classroom where I do use the live scribe pen. Um, one of the things for me is I do use other tools in the classroom, as Peggy had mentioned earlier today. And uh, what I really like about the live scribe pen is its portability in terms of a tool. You can make screencasts um, on different tools that I have in my classroom, including um, an iPad, but sometimes it's a lot harder to do that, and especially for assessment to be able to do it and take notes at the same time. So when you're using something like a LiveScribe pen, it's very portable, so it's easy for me to be actually recording assessments on my students as I'm actually teaching them, where it would be a lot harder for me to be trying to write things down on either a computer or typing it down on the iPad at exactly the same time. And I think that that's what makes this um, so incredible, is that it has all of this tremendous value in a really portable device that also um, seems to last regardless. I have absolutely no problem handing this tool over to my students and letting them use it as well. And um, as Peggy had mentioned, and I think Sue just did too, I do teach younger students as well. So it is great in terms of its portability. Okay, so this is a picture. Of, of people might recognize them. This is Ben Hazard, and this is actually a photograph that Zoe had taken at Unplugged in the summer. And um, you can see that Ben is actually holding the LiveScribe pen there in his hand, and he's using that LiveScribe pen in terms of his own professional development. And I think that that's what's great. In order for us to use this in the classroom, we also want to be familiar in using the tool on our own as well. And we can use it to tell our own stories. And we can also use it um, to not only get those stories out orally, but to use it as that brainstorming tool for writing. And um, when it comes to working with young students, it's great to be able to use that in the classroom, uh, especially for some of those hesitant writers, to get those oral ideas out and then let them listen back to those ideas either on the computer when the pen cast has been downloaded or uh, through the pen itself in the paper and then transfer that over to the writing. For some students, just getting that oral brainstorming time, that chance to get those ideas out uh, really makes a big difference for them. And you can see here that that can be true as well for adults as it can be for students. 
Um, this is an example of one of the blog posts that Zoe had done on our collaborative blog, uh, which is live with livescribe.edublogs.org. And um, I'm sure it will get added to the chat window, and if not, I can add it afterwards as well. Um, but in this particular example, it was really interesting because Zoe had actually interviewed her grandmother. And the neat thing about this conversation was she, she got a real audio record of her grandmother's life and history in this particular um, pencast example. But her grandmother, who may have not wanted to be kind of bombarded with having a computer in front of her or a laptop or some like much bigger device, was very willing to just talk into the pen. And I think that that's what's kind of incredible about all of this is that the pen, it doesn't overwhelm students. It is just that. It's a pen and paper. And I was doing um, uh, in-service yesterday on it, and I was even telling that to some teachers, maybe even some who are um, here now in the audience, but just that idea that it is. It's a pen and paper, but what's incredible about that pen and paper is that audio component that gets added to it. And that was what was used here, is it was that audio component for storytelling. And imagine, not only could she use this with her grandmother, but imagine how that could be used in the classroom. I'm thinking with younger students um, in kindergarten and grade one, those hesitant writers, to really get their stories out. Um, you know, we think of the oral storytelling tradition. This is the oral storytelling tradition. And when you sync that pen to the computer and then you share it, it can also go up on blogs. And I know there's lots of people in here who have uh, student blogs or their own blogs. And what a great way to then transfer that over to a blogging platform. Um, this is an example of one of um, her pen tasks in terms of getting some ideas down. And it's that brainstorming part. And what's neat about the brainstorming is that if you have the record function on, not only is it going to record your writing, but it's also going to record your oral ideas. And um, what's great about that is that for maybe students where they find the writing to be more problematic, maybe if their ideas are flowing out of them and they don't want to be um, waiting to get all of those ideas out in writing, they can expand on those individual notes and then they can go back and listen to them afterwards and use that as the brainstorming tool for some of the writing that then gets done afterwards as well. And I mean, I love this too because if I'm even writing notes to students, I can write down, I can use the LiveScribe pen, I can write down a few little ideas to share with them, like some feedback, like check spelling, but then I can also expand on it orally. So they might be able to read check spelling, they can go back and do that, but they can also click on those words with the pen, or they can, it can be plugged in, it can be hooked up to the computer, they can listen to my ideas on the computer, and then use that as a way for them to go back and edit their work. So it just, it, it has that extra feature in terms of getting the audio plus the visual together. And this is one of, um, these are actually some of the sticky notes, which is amazing as well, because I've actually just, I just got the sticky notes the other day, so I'm very, very excited to use them. And in fact, I have them set up to use at a literacy center starting on Monday, so I can't wait. Um, but what neat about the sticky notes is that it can function very much like a sticky note, um, but you can use it for descriptive feedback. You can use it to not only write a little note, but to expand on those ideas um, orally too. And you can see there's a range from the person who adds the dot, who is maybe just giving the oral ideas, to the person who maybe has written a few things down, and then if you click on those words, you can get a better understanding. So they're big, giving the big idea, the actual oral stuff is giving the rest. Um, and what I just found out about the sticky notes, which I love, is that they're actually numbered just like the pages in the LiveScribe notebooks, which means that when you sync the pen, you can actually find the number and you can share the information on the sticky notes to a bigger community if you want via blog post or through emailing it out. So there are some other options through there as well. And um, this is an example of how the LiveScribe pen was actually used 
used as part of um, an art project. And basically what they did is they used the sticky notes with it. But they had the live, they had the students create art. This was a teacher. And after that, they offered a they offered some feedback um, for the art on the sticky notes. So students could go around, they could click record, they could offer the feedback and stick it on. And then if you click on to, when I click on to the next slide here, you'll see examples of the artwork up. And this is actually, they did like an open gallery for parents. And um, what happened is parents came and they could actually listen to the feedback from, um, from fellow students, from the teacher, and they could also provide some of their own feedback as well. And what's great about these sticky notes is that they're not that expensive to purchase. None of the actual materials themselves, the added ones are that expensive. So it's, it's a great way to use tools that are already being used in the classroom, but adding that audio component to it too. And I mean in Ontario for our new arts curriculum, being able to do the walkthrough, look at the different um, look at the different paintings, look at the different artworks and offer feedback is just fantastic. And then this is another example um, for media literacy, which at least here in Ontario is a really big um, new push to make sure that we actually do some really relevant media literacy is they've taken photographs here and then what you can, and it's a little bit harder to see, but what they can actually do is you can add either dot stickers, you can cut out the live scribe paper and put them on and actually add some audio captions to the photograph, which could be used in a couple of different ways. You can either take a photograph of this board and then upload the audio part that could be added, say, to a blog post with this, so you almost create like a mini movie in two parts, one with the photograph to see it and one with the audio component. Or um, they can also go back to hear some of their audio captions, listen to it, reflect on those captions that they use, and then use that as a way to create some of their own posters as well. Um, and it, I just noticed Mary Beth asked, um, so could you use the pen to hear the audio? And yes, you can use the pen um, to hear the audio. If they've recorded it with the pen, you can actually cut out the paper once it's recorded and stick it on. I actually have paper cut out and stuck halfway around my classroom on different things that the students can go over with the pen that was used to record that note and they can listen back to it afterwards. Um, so that really helps a lot too. Um, and I'm now going to kind of pass the mic back over to Sue for you so that she can explain how she uses it um, in a classroom environment too. Thanks, Aviva. Um, I teach at a college level, but this also works really well, I found, with high school students too. So the way that I'm using it for math is to keep my students more engaged, both inside of class and outside of class. So if you look at this first screenshot, um, I have my students every day. They don't know who it's going to be, but they have to walk in ready to be the note taker. And so I just bring one pen to class and I hand it to them. And then I have a separate notebook for each class. It just makes it easier to uh, decide which notes went with which class. So this is just a screenshot and the link should be showing up in the chat over there, but we do have the links to these if you want to see the original. Uh, so they just take notes, and then what I do is I have an online calendar, which is the picture in the middle. And so for this particular day, which was absolute value equations, then I've attached the three different classes of notes that students took uh, to that day on the calendar. And I do all three because I try to do different examples in all three of my classes. So if somebody, say, was in my 8 o'clock class and they didn't understand the lesson very well, they could go and they could watch the 12 noon class and they would see different examples. They would see a little bit different interaction. And it does pick up the sound even though I'm walking around the room. It still picks me up pretty well. Uh, and then the other way that I use it outside of class is I create these animated examples for my students to follow, and I encourage them to do it before class, uh, but so you can see here in the calendar that I, every day I have about three or four animated examples that take two minutes to create, and then I just put a link to them in the calendar so students, when they need extra help, they can go back to these examples. And my plan for the spring is to flip my classroom, which means that uh, they're going to do all of the 
previous work. They're going to read the textbook. They're going to do all the examples outside of class. And that way, when they come to class, I can use that time for a deeper discussion. We can do projects. We can do hands-on activities. So I'm really excited. But the way that I'm going to be able to flip my class is because of this, this slash scribe pen. And then the other thing, the newest thing that uh, both Kim Falberg, who's in the room here, and uh, several other people at LiveScribe have helped me figure out how to do is to how to embed text behind the animation here. So instead of just seeing a blank piece of paper with animation, then what you can do is you can have like an interactive handout that they can get to on the web. So you can see that there's typewritten stuff here. And then if they tap anywhere on the page, it will animate for them. And so uh, this link is also, it will be coming up in the chat, I think. Uh, I do this as well for test keys now, so that instead of just handwriting out a flat test key and posting it on the web, then what my students can do is if, if they only have a question on number five, they can tap on number five and then it animates and with sound. Just has me explaining number five. Now, outside of my classroom, I have some other experiences uh, with the LiveScribe Pen. I work with our Disability Resources Center to try to get uh, the LiveScribe Pen into as many hands as possible for teachers who have students in their class who need note takers. And so um, what's happening, and just like in my class, instead of just the student who needs the note taker getting the notes, then all the students get the notes. And so it's more of a universal design for, for learning. Uh, but I have one exciting example that I have to share with everybody here. Uh, I have a, a niece who has an autistic son. And last summer, I, we had a big family reunion, and she was there, and her son was there. And I showed her this LiveScribe pen. And we talked about all these great ideas that what she could do. And so she took it, and she's been working with him. And he's very good on his iPad, but he's very hard on paper. So there is a way to get the pen casts onto the iPad. So what, what her plan was, was to teach him the alphabet. But the school wasn't very supportive of it. And so when they had an IEP, they didn't want him to use any technology. So last week, she sent me this exciting news. She said her son started writing his name on the iPad. I mean, she must have just been in tears. And she said that this week, she got a letter home from the school saying that they're willing now to try to incorporate using his iPad into the academics at school. And then she hopes that the next step is that they will allow them to use the smart pen as well, because that's how she's getting individualized lessons into his iPad so that he can learn whatever she wants him to learn. And then the other thing that's really amazing that she does are these dot stickers that Aviva talked about. Uh, she's, my, my niece is a full-time student and a single mom. So here she is trying to raise an autistic 11-year-old son while she's trying to go to school full time. And he loves being read to. So what she did is she took all of his favorite books and she put one dot on each page. And then she recorded herself reading the book to him. And I mean, he's just, he's so excited. He just, he'll grab now anything in the house. He runs around the house looking for anything with words on it. And then he has his mom dot sticker it so that he can tap on it with his pen and it'll say the words that are on the paper. So. Uh, she, it has changed her life, but really, more than anything, it has changed his life. So, you know, someone who's been told that they'll never read, they'll never do anything, can now write his name. I just think that's amazing. So, anyway, if, if you want to see, there should be a, a video uh, on the LiveScribe website. There's a video on how it's helping with dyslexic students. And then there's also an article on their blog about writing talking tests. So if you have a student who needs the test read to them, now you don't need a person to stand there and read it to them over and over again. They can tap each question as many times as they need to rehear the question until they're ready to answer it. So it's, it's very, a, a very amazing tool. And again, they don't really have to be sitting at a computer. So, but that's, that's all I have. And I'm going to hand the mic back to who, who's up at the mic? <laughs> uh, this is the time where it gets really interesting. Um, because maybe we could turn it back to um, Kim, 
briefly to see if she has captured any questions that came up in the chat. And then, after those questions, I'd like to have it go back to Sue, either you or Aviva, to kind of bring in these other um, live scribe experts in the room and have them talk. I know Bill is ready to talk. Janice is ready to talk. I would love for Tim to take the mic. So, um, Tim, go ahead, and then we'll let's turn it back to um, um, Aviva or Sue to facilitate that part. Great. I only took down two, and I might there might be more that I missed. Um, somebody asks, how many live scribe pins do you have in your classroom on average? If anybody, Sue, anybody, okay, go ahead, Sue. Yeah, I I just have one. But again, I'm, I'm at a higher level. But even if you have more than one at a lower level, what happens is each pen has to go with the same recording. So if you have a piece of paper that you want a child to rehear again and again, what has to use the same paper? So if you've got too many pens in there, that is going to be confusing to figure out which pen did that paper. OK. Aviva? Um, I have two in my classroom, but I have one of the echo pens and one of the pulse, and I color code the different notebooks. Like I make sure I use different notebooks for it. I wouldn't really want to have more than two, but the two has been ideal because I do often use it at centers. So with two and like four kids, the students can really get their hands on the pen, but they can also still collaborate with them as well. What is the difference between the echo and the pulse? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Um, sorry, the um, Echo Pen, there really isn't a huge difference. It actually comes more so in um, some of the downloads that you can do with it. Um, the Echo Pen actually allows you, because it charges differently, to toggle it differently to your computer. So there's an app that you can actually download that almost lets it work a little bit like um, a, an interactive whiteboard of sorts. There's actually a post on the Live with Livescribe blog that I think Zoe did that shares a little bit about that. And Joe from Smart Pen Central had actually demonstrated it at Echo last year. But um, other than that, the pen itself works exactly the same. The notebooks are exactly the same. Um, they also look differently. The black pen that shows up in a lot of these pictures here, that's the Echo Pen. It has like a cleaner, slicker kind of design. And the Pulse Pen, is it's more rounded, it's gray, it's a little bit thicker. Um, but other than that, they work basically the same. OK, which one is more preferred then? Well, I think because of the apps right now, I would probably say the Echo Pen, um, only because it, it offers a few more options. If down the road you even want to download some of the apps that maybe aren't available on the Pulse Pen. Um, but in terms of regular classroom use, and I'll say right now I haven't downloaded those apps. Like I'm just using it for like regular classroom use. I don't think there necessarily is a preferential one. Um, students who are maybe doing more writing with it may like the feel of one pen versus the other. The black pen, the Echo one, um, has it's the, it's a little bit thinner. Um, it rests a little bit easier. It feels it actually feels like you can um, write like a regular pen. Where the Pulse one is a little thicker. It's rounder. So if I was doing a lot of writing, I tend to actually use the Echo pen. Um, where the Pulse one, I wouldn't use quite as much just because of the feel of it. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> and somebody asked, um, I guess, and their question was stated, I, or comment was stated, I guess what I'm missing is how students access this. Is it at home in a one-to-one -one or a similar environment? I guess the question was, how are they using these, you know, since not every student has one, even though I saw somebody mention that they have, a, like, a class set. Aviva? Um, well, I know, like, in my classroom, I use it in a couple different ways. I sometimes use it in centers where students might record their reading using the LiveScribe pen. Um, they might, um, if they do some kind of of oral storytelling using it or do some brainstorming with it. Um, in terms of listening back to it, I like the function that you can download those pen casts. 
And then what I can do, because I have a few more computers in the classroom, is I can, I can download them, we can share them, I can put them on the blog, and students can even sit around the computer either by themselves or in a small group and listen to the pencast there. They can also access it at home through those pencasts as well. I also use it for assessment for myself. Um, so because of that, um, I, I'm actually able to put, because LiveScribe actually links up to Evernote where I store my assessment, I'm actually able to um, write my notes, record examples of student work, and I'm actually able to share it with my Evernote and then tag it so that, that they all basically sort those assessment data together. And then that way when I go to have report cards and stuff, I've got everything actually put together. Yes, and I saw the latest that um, with the latest purchase, you can get a year of premium Evernote. Um, and one of the questions uh, was, how are they accessing the PENCAST, which you partially addressed. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're access, they can access it in a couple different notes. ways. They can, they can access um, the PENCAST by actually clicking on the paper itself if they wanted to. They can go back, they can listen to it by re-clicking on the paper and hearing it right through the pen, or they've accessed it through the computers because we'll sync the pencasts onto the computer and then share them through blog posts so students can actually go. I've got lots of different computers in the classroom. Sometimes they might sit around one, sometimes they might access one of the computers in the pod. They can listen to the pencast through there and then they can use the information from there to maybe update their work, to go back and reread the text. Um, to maybe go back and relook at the how they had solved the math problem all through all through that, or they'll also access it as well as their parents access it at home. So a the parents are able to actually see what's happening in the classroom because they're able to kind of get a feel of some of the work that the students have done, and then um, on top of it, um, they're also able to um, go back and make some of those same changes, take some of that same feedback for the work that they're doing at home because we are sharing it through a blog. Um, it is up there for others to see or that uh, PDF, that PENCAST PDF can also be emailed to them or I also have a class Google Docs account so I can also send it to the Google Docs account and they can access the information from there. Wow, that's, that's exciting that there are so many options. That and and um, somebody yeah Tim mentioned that they can also be converted to MP3 and listened to on an MP3 player. That's amazing. I think. Um, let's see. Uh, what were the other questions? Somebody asked about, is it possible to um, auto-sync to Evernote? Um, Peggy, did you want me to take the mic now? Yes, actually I would because Janice, you've been adding so many things in the chat and responding to people's questions. and. I know that Kim is trying to keep up with those questions and is doing an, an incredible <laughs> job, but I know you have been too. So why don't you jump in here and respond to any of those questions that you've already sort of tried to put in the chat and add any information you like. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome everybody. I, I have to say that Sue is the pro um, and Bill behind all the technological advances that they've done with it. Mine's more the application level that has just soared high both at the college level and the high school that I teach. Uh, in fact, the surrounding school districts have now bought smart pens for their teachers as a result of uh, the local media interviewing me and finding out how I'm using it with the students. So for example, um, a very important thing is my students with learning differences. They used to go in and have an audio cassette recorder to record all their tests and then they'd have to go to the recorder and then write the response to the test questions. 
And then if they wanted to go back and look at one of the questions, they'd have to keep rewinding this silly audio recorder. And it was very linear, it was very time consuming and frustrating. Now that we're using PenCast for the students, as Sue explained, it's not linear. It's random access. So if the student wants to go back to question two after they did question 20 because something got, I don't know, um, made them think of, hey, I'll go back to two after reading what 20 said, then they're able to quickly access and quickly respond to the question and not be fighting with this audio recorder. So that's where our special uh, learning difference kids have just loved it. Um, and then the second thing is I'm building a library. I have a three-year library now of things that have not changed in chemistry, like oxidation numbers and things like that. So putting the basics down so that when a student's been absent, whether it's mono or out for sports or family vacation, the students can go back and sequentially look at my pen cast and fill in the gaps so that when they come to class, they're not lost because of all the gaps um, that would have happened um, without being able to see me for a tutorial. And uh, it saved my time. I don't have as many tutorials where I have to sit down one-on-one -on -one with kids. And then the kids, you know, my basketball players say that they get out their iPhone, they go to Safari, they download my pen cast, and um, they're listening to them and watching them uh, on the way to their basketball game. So it is tremendous. And my college students have said the same thing. I had a student who failed my class one semester, took me um, a year later, and his difference uh, in he ended up with an A minus or a B plus. I can't remember which. He was real close to A. I think I gave him an A minus. But it was a result of him going back and looking at the pen cast. The first year I taught him, I didn't have pen cast. And he was working 40, 50 hours a week. And so he couldn't look at his work until the weekend. And when you're in a math or science class, you can't wait that long to look at the material. It starts to kind of all blend together. So, and then I guess the last thing I wanted to add from what people were saying, I only had to have one pen. That's all I've been using. Um, but I recently purchased a second pen, just a smart pen, for my um, test that I'm doing with the students with learning differences. I can copy off uh, the pen cast that I did. It copies off of a normal copier. I make 10 copies, how many copies I want. The only um, problem, uh, and I think uh, LiveScribe's working on this, is that the student does have to use the actual pen that was used for the pen cast. So the 20 students who might be taking my makeup, they can't take it simultaneously together because they have to have the pen. So that would be the only um, issue. And I'm going to uh, log off for a moment on the mic and see if there's any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Janice. Tim, are you ready to take the mic? Or Bill? Um, Bill Schulte here, and um, I am the disability specialist who is responsible for um, 26 schools uh, in South Florida. And I will tell you, I think this is absolutely an incredible pen. Um, it's so easy to get staff to learn how to use it. Um, basically, you turn the pen on, you click a button, and you just write like you normally would. Um, and I call that level one. So that would be a level one user um, where you're just using the notebooks or the or the um, sticky notes or the audio notes. You're just basically changing the pen and changing the paper you're using. But the benefit that you get by uh, capturing that live is is pretty cool. <clears throat> I do think that having web presence whether that's a blog or a, um, a wiki or some some mechanism to be able to distribute uh, the pen cast really just puts it on steroids. Um, uh, Janice just mentioned that you know that one of the challenges if you only have a pen and paper and you're using level one that only one can use it at a time. But uh, with the software now you can drag and drop it and it turns it into an interactive PDF or you know push it out to your iPad or your iPod or 
uh, Evernote. I mean, there's just so many options when you're using the software and web presence <clears throat> that it's um, it's pretty unlimitless. And in that manner, uh, students get that active ink and audio um, in any fashion. And so um, we we started this pilot uh, with 26 math teachers um, about two years ago. And no offense to math teachers out there, but um, if you get middle school and high school math teachers excited about something, you know you're on to something. And um, these math teachers just came back ecstatic about what was happening. And um, students started reporting back to their administration and to their parents and to the teachers that this is the reason why they've been able to master complex um, math questions or problems. Um, because we know kids don't learn it the first time through. And um, from there, um, yes, Sue, my math teacher friend, you know I can say that and get away with it. <laughs> um, uh, so Sue's putting up our um, a district story that happened. It's uh, www.livescribek12.com forward slash Collier. And um, it has uh, all sorts of videos in there about ways uh, teachers are reacting to it and how we're, in, how we're using it in the district. But in terms of students with disabilities or learning difficulties, um, I just find it invaluable. Um, uh, you know, Bill, I'm, well, I'm I would be loading that, that if this is can, can, and yeah, it's, and not, it's coming not coming up. up. You're, you're doing what? I was loading, I was loading the meeting. Okay, I'm seeing it on my screen. <clears throat> oh, it just went away. All right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, um, you know, just uh, I had a teacher yesterday who was doing Islands of the Blue Dolphin, and um, you know, instead of having to read that to you know every single child individually or multiple different classes, she put those on sticky notes, and then uploaded that to our um, to our Angel account, which is similar to Blackboard. And, uh, and kids logged in, and if they needed that support, they were able to uh, have that read to them. So um, teachers are finding that with a little bit of prep work ahead of time, they're, they're reaping huge rewards um, in the end. Um, that if they've done it once, they've basically cloned themselves, and now they can be anywhere um, doing anything that they need to do. Um, there's some controversy. Um, there are some teachers who um, who don't want, you know, from a district office, if I say, I think you should be using the pen, they may not want to use the pen because they're afraid of being recorded. And, um, you know, we've been recording classrooms for, uh, since microcassette recorders. Uh, the federal courts already ruled that public education uh, can be recorded. Um, but we tell teachers that it's still their classroom and they need to use wisdom. And um, they still have ownership of that. So if a student brings in a pen to their classroom, they should they should be in control of that and say pause when they need to say pause. Um, and that's that's basically resolved the issue um, of security or with um, you know maybe somebody acting out in class and the teacher having to pause. So uh, you know as long as teachers are aware of it, they they can handle that and, it, and it's no longer an issue. Um, but we are now up to about 400 pens, and um, schools are buying them on their own now. Uh, we're buying them for individual students now. Um, our ELL department is buying them. Uh, we have classrooms where there's docs and sticky notes on just about everything you do when you walk into that classroom. Um, and so it's, uh, it's been quite exciting to, to watch this project develop. Questions? Great, Bill, thanks. Okay, I just was posting, Bill, the question about security of putting things in Evernote. I, my teachers are concerned about students being able to share that link with students who haven't taken a test. How's that been addressed? Um, we don't use Evernote. We use um, we use a Moodle type system, um, so we can track. Uh, we can we can put timing on it where you know a certain test is only available for a certain amount of hours for certain kids. Um, 
we wouldn't necessarily put a test on there. We would put examples uh, to help students get prepared for the test. But I think we would make other accommodations uh, for testing. Great. Thank you so much. And Aviva has mentioned there's a special discount code before we go on to Tim. Um, if you enter classroom slash 2011 from Smart Pen Central, you'll get a discount. And Tim, we're going to go ahead and pass pass it over to you. Well, thanks. Can you hear me? We sure can. I was just going to paste the link in again to the uh, Smart Pen. Uh, 101. This is an outline for the Smart Pen 101 course because I think that might be a really good um, resource for people. Um, but boy, what a privilege to, to join this group today and see see all the applications. Um, trying to think of what would be valuable to share. Um, I'm actually creating a little toolkit um, that I have videos and Sue's already shared step by step how to do the. Um, the pencast PDF, I call, we call it the overlay or merge technique. And um, w what I'm excited about is hopefully in the future I'm working on a web service where people could just, uh, teachers not say, doesn't want to get into Acrobat Pro or PDF Fill um, Pro tools, they could just upload a pencast PDF and upload the original PDF document and it would do the, the merge and that would be especially nice if like uh, to do things like what Sue's done with like multiple page tests with keys because if you think about a math teacher, I was a math teacher, so I pick on them, who are generally really terrible at adopting technology and using it because math never never changes, right? Um, if a math teacher could solve a math test with their voice or <laughs> get their students answering each question, you know, send them out one at a time out in the hall with the, the test key and say, here, add a solution to the next question because he did such a great job on it. And if the, that math teacher is not great with technology, knew they could just dock the smart pen and click, click, and have that test or review available as a pencast PDF, wouldn't that be exciting? Most definitely. And Tim, can you talk about the bundle you mentioned um, in an email as well? Oh, okay. So the the Echo 4 and 8 gigabyte educational bundles, those come with the Smart Pen 101 course. Is that what you meant? Yes. Yeah. And then they also come with something called the Education Idea Book, which is about 60 pages of really solid examples. And it links to things by Sue and Janice and, and others, um, which is a really a great resource. Um, otherwise, those things are hard to get. Um, so, and I'm not sure if Smart Pen Central, they sell the, um, and they're really great people. And they, uh, anyway, um, so and I don't want to put a plug in for myself, because um, I'm really an educator at heart, but I work now for LiveScribe Engaging Technologies, so I, I don't want to turn this into a sales thing. But anyway, um, I, I'm happy to help people. I oh, my live binder. Go oh, ahead. sorry. No, I see you bringing up my live binder, and that's a bummer. It's not wanting to come up. So, yeah. It's loading. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and you can see in my live binder, I've linked to Kyle Paces. He has a very popular live binder, and I've linked to like Sue Glasgow's blog. That's just on the the sites tab. Um, maybe a good place in here to go is if you go over to the print on. Um, if you click on the print on, oh, okay, I guess everybody can click individually on whatever tabs they want. Mm -hmm. But like if you cl click on the print on, I try to put a number of, of things there that could be printed on dot paper. What I really need in here is to have a, a tab for Janice Crowley, a tab for Bill Schultz and Sue Glasgow and, and have and, and collect some of their best pieces here. Um, what else is, oh, if you go to the research tab, um, I don't know if everybody's seen the pen casting white paper by uh, Dr. Andrew Van Schack, but there's another one there that is very new. If you go to um, 
So if you go to the Research tab and you go to the Research Proposal Enhanced Instructional Feedback, what Andy's been working on, he's been sharing about this for years, is imagine that a student uh, shares with you, uh, shares with the teacher the electronic version of, say, a paper, and, and multiply that times many students. Okay, so you, the idea is that you would print those um, papers, say they came in Word documents, you print them out on dot paper, and then you sit in your easy chair with your smart pen and you add your voice comments very efficiently, and then you sync your pen, and each student gets their own individual paperback as a pencast PDF and they're able to hear your voice and see your writing. And Andy talks in that paper about the efficiencies gained for the teacher and the benefits for students. And that's the kind of thing that will become much easier when LiveScribe has a wireless pen um, and the Pencast PDF is merges so, so um, much easier to do. Well, where do you get the dot paper and the sticky, mix, sticky notes? Uh, well, let's see. If just at retail, uh, smart well, smart pen central, or certainly LiveScribe online, or Best Buy um, is it, I've always found is a good place to get the sticky notes um, or the sound stickers. Oh, and if anybody in the conversation wants, I can just paste it into the. I'll paste it in a minute. I'll give everybody a free code for the uh, sound sticker app, so you don't have to spend twenty five dollars just to get sound stickers. And then if people want to just email me, I'll send them a sheet of sound stickers if, if they don't have them and don't want to go spend $25 for a thousand of those. So that's, Ooh, that's awesome. Like, That'd yeah. be great. And speaking of sound stickers, just if you go over to the sound stickers tab in the live binder, I made a little set of um, five videos and they're here and they're also on um, Smart Pen Central. They were so nice to actually ask if they could put um, embed the little five YouTube videos I did for sound stickers on their site. So if you go to live or Smart Pen Central sound stickers, you'll, you'll find those five videos there too. I'll, I'll be quiet. Questions? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tim. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the session um, and then we'll go ahead and take it back to asking questions. But we are so grateful for everybody that has joined us today. So thank you so much, everybody. We want to let you know about Steve Hargadon's upcoming interviews. On the 13th, he's going to be interviewing David Maxwellen. On the 15th, he'll be interviewing Blue Valley School's CAPS program. And Scott McLeod on January 5th and Ian Jukes on January 10th. And on December 17th, we hope you'll join us for the Unplugged Canada session. And we'll have Rod Lucier. Hopefully, Zoe will be able to join us and Ben Hazard and a, a group of great educators from Canada. So we hope that you'll join us for that session. At the same time, on December 17th, it's going to close out the year of shows for us. And as soon as you exit today's session, a survey will automatically open in your browser. And we hope you'll give us feedback on today's session, as well as guests and topics for future sessions that you'd like to see on our shows. In that survey, you can also request a professional development certificate. If that survey doesn't automatically open, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com or if you watch a recording on our archives page, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com and request a professional development certificate for that session as well. You can also subscribe to our iTunes U channel. The, either the videos or the MP4 or the MP3s, the audio collection. The URL to subscribe directly to the iTunes U channel in iTunes is tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U, all one word. And that will take you directly and open it up right into iTunes. 
so that you can subscribe to either or both channels. And we want to give a very special thanks to Aviva and Sue and to Zoe for help planning this, even though she wasn't able to be with us today, as well as to all of the other colleagues, Bill, Janice, Tim, everybody that joined us today in the session, as well as to each of you for asking questions and contributing to the conversation, and to Steve Hargadon and to Blackboard. We're so grateful. And we hope that you will continue and you will join us next Saturday when we have another great session as well. So I'm going to pass it back to the uh, moderators and our very special guests. And Tim has put in the code uh, to get the sound stickers that you can get for free. And the discount. Um, Aviva wasn't sure about the amount. She thinks that it was about 10%, but it may be more um, when you're going to go ahead and purchase the LifeScribe pens. I know they have um, them for, I think it's two gigs of space for $99. Um, and Sue, uh, I believe you're going to take the mic next or help facilitate the mics for the questions. but. Would you recommend the two gig? Would that is that enough space, or do you really do you need the four or the eight gig for the the space? Uh, if you could um, take the mic to and answer that question for us. Sure. Um, I had a one gig for like two years and never filled it up. So so now a two gig I would think would be fine. They've had a special going on for $99, which is really reasonable. I know that you get some extra things with the four gig and the eight gig as well, which, which are nice features too. But if you're looking to save money and just want to get the pen right away, uh, I would say the two gig is fine. And then also they make refurbished pens. So you can get a refurbished Pulse, the older version, that's not quite as comfortable. But still, if you're looking for one of these just to try it out and get started right away, I think they make the refurbished ones for as low as like $50. It's, it's real reasonable. So um, that would be my answer to that. If anybody else wants to chime in on that, that's fine. Uh, also, I'll take the mic to run a discussion now. If anybody has comments they want to make or other questions, I'll hand the mic over to you. Just Okay, how, how do I tell who has the mic? Who has a question here? Oh, Tim. All right, Tim, I'm going to give you the Okay, Tim. <laughs> Let me just jump in for a second, Sue, to explain that when someone raises their hand, their name will pop up to the top of the list and it will have a number by it, like one, two, three, four. And then um, you just tell them um, that you're giving the mic to them and we'll make sure that they have it so they can talk. And Tim has his hand raised, so he can go ahead now. Tim, you can click on the talk button and go ahead and speak. Oops. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I hadn't clicked on talk. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> Dummy me. Um, no, so the two gigabyte ones are, I would say, mostly fine. If people don't want the premium connectors, that's email and Google Docs, Google Sites. And then if, if they don't want the Smart Pen 101 course because they already know how to use the Smart Pen well. Um, but that Smart Pen 101 course is pretty useful, and I'm actually working on an advanced course. It's more for special, it's more of AT applications of it. Um, and then the Smart Pen 101 course links to the Education Ideas books, which if people want, they can email me and I'll send them uh, an outline for Smart Pen 101 and, um, and a sampler, at least, of the Education Idea book. Um, but yeah, those are in our in the educational bundles. So that's those are those are nice resources to have. And then I'll stop talking here.
Thanks, Tim. And Tim, can you put your email address in the uh, in the chat? Oh, I just added it again. Right oh, there. great. But if Thanks. Tim could do it again, then it will be near his name. <laughs> so, is there is there anybody else who has comments on how they're using it or questions about how they'd like to see it being used? Uh, I know there was a question earlier about what are the dot stickers. They're little tiny dots. I don't know. They're about an inch wide, and you can't write on them. All you do is you tap on it, and then you record sound into them. And then you can stick them anywhere you want, and then you take the pen and you can play back that sound. So they're very nice for just sticking, like I said, in a book or something. And then they do have uh, the actual sticky notes that you can write on as well as record. So I see Janice Crowley has her hand up, so I'm going to hand the mic over to Janice. Okay, I'll turn mine off. Janice, hit talk. Hi, Sue. There, there was um, a question um, last May um, of possibly the company putting together a dock station of 10 pens that could all simultaneously read the same information. Do you know if that technology has been created and if they're going that direction because that could solve that problem of uh, test security and giving students the ability to use multiple pens on one test? Uh, Janice, I don't. I haven't heard anything. Uh, I don't know if anybody else in here, Tim, you're probably more in tune with what they're doing right now. So, uh, but but I don't know of anything uh, yet. They haven't released any information. So, Tim, if you if you know the answer, you can chime in. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Was it about security somehow? I'm sorry. No, they they wanted to know if Lifescribe was discussing putting together like ten pens for a docking station and somehow that would alleviate the security issues of having to share pens and all of that. Oh boy, you know, I, I keep my ear to the ground and some things I know I can't, I haven't heard anything about that and next, <laughs> I, I would at least say something if I knew anything even if I wasn't supposed to say really anything about it, but I haven't heard anything about that. Um, but I'll check, yeah. Sure. Um, I'm Thank you. stepping back in. Just It was brought up by the owner of the company. He just said, would we be interested in that? And I remember Eileen, who was a special ed teacher, said that that would be ideal if you could have 10 pens, you know, kind of like you do with computers feeding into one area, where they could all be picking up the same information so that the students could be working on um, all ten of them would get the same information from one pen. That's what had been brought up, and I didn't know if there was any further research and whether that was coming out. All right, thank you, Janice. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Any comments on how you use your pen? Somebody asked how to um, embed a pen cast in a blog. Oh, that well, that's a bit of a process. Uh, you have to, at this point, have. The what the pen test itself in the blog. That was the question. Yes, the pen cast in the blog. Okay, so I actually, so that's not very hard. Um, if you go and you upload your pen cast to your LiveScribe account, because when you buy your pen and you register it, everybody has a free online LiveScribe account. And so one of the connectors, which is a way to share your LiveScribe pencast, one of the connectors is sending it up into that, that cloud. In fact, the pencast that I showed you guys was sitting in that cloud, and that's how you were able to see it. And uh, let's see if I can get that link back up there so you can see. Oh, that's not my link. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can get my link back up there. You usually just have to hit return twice on that, too. Okay. It usually brings up the one before you, and then yeah. hit return twice, and it should come up. Is okay, that the well, page you'd like? This the is the page I would like. Is everybody seeing my live scribe yes. page here? Okay, yes. So, so if you look over to the left where it says sharing preferences, uh, you can email it. So once you have this up in the cloud in their server, then you can email it to a friend. You can download it. 
Now, this PDF is static. It's not the same. There's another way to get an animated PDF. But here, at the very bottom, it says embed this file. So when you click on that, it will give you the HTML code that you just need to embed in your blog. And they run just fine. I've been embedding them in my blogs. I use both uh, WordPress and I use Blogger. So Tim, Tim has a comment. Go ahead, Tim. Um, if you click on that embed this file link, um, you, you, if you, if this used to, there used to be a neat way to um, enlarge the pencast. But anyway, if you if you copy that embed code, you can change the attributes for the width and the height. Because if you just paste it the way it is, it's all with that kind of thumbnail, smaller size, which means people really will probably need to go full screen to view it. So if you want to enlarge it, you can. But there used to be a nice a web service to do it, but it doesn't work anymore, I guess, because LiveScribe changed the way it does the embed code. Okay, thanks, Tim. Oh, sure. So any other questions? Does that answer your question on how I embedded it? All right. Great. Uh, thank you. Anybody Are else? Are there any other questions that we might have missed? If so, please let us know. Um, is there a way to purchase uh, the educator bundle, like pers for a personal use, other than a school purchase order? I'm going to send that one over to Tim because I don't know. So, an individual that's not buying through a school district. Mm -hmm. So, basically, you really want the Smart Pen 101 course because that's something that's Otherwise available for thirty, it's like twenty nine ninety five is the is the deal. So let let me find out if you're interested in that. You could email me, and I, I can find out how it could work for for individuals. Um, might be able to get special dispensation to give access to the Smart Pen One Hundred and One course, kind of on a limited basis to key leaders like you all. So I can find out about that. Okay, that'd be great. And I don't know if the discount would apply with that or not. On a uh, bundle? Uh, no, I know because it's, it's that Smart Pen Central, and I'm not sure if they do educational bundles or not. So, yeah, you might, you might ask them. You might just ask them if they have educational bundles. That's the would that have the Smart Pen 101 access and the like the ed education ideas access? I just don't know. So, so that that code, that discount code, was that just for? Like the ninety-nine dollar one. Oh, uh, and I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't pay much attention to that code because that was for Smart Pen Cent Central, and I'm not sure what. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I was just. I really want one. I but we've really <laughs> maxed out our Christmas budget, so I'm not sure if uh, there's much left in our budget for that. But we shall see. But you know, so if people want to just email me, um, I'll I'll see what I can do about giving them access or getting them access for the Smart Pen 101 course because then you can see what value it has. How's that? Sounds good. Sounds okay. Good. Thanks. That sounds really good. All right. Anything else? I'm willing to stay if you guys have questions. And please let us know before we let everybody go and enjoy the rest of their weekend before one of the few weekends left before the Christmas and winter break. We appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, Tim, I know you're going to be getting lots of emails. So about questions about uh, ways we can purchase these. I'm very impatient. I would love to be able to just go buy one right now. But thank you so much, everybody, and Viva and everybody. And uh, please let Zoe know that she is in our thoughts and our prayers uh, with her family situation. I know that's this difficult. And uh, our hearts are with her. 
and please join us next Saturday at the same time when we will hopefully she can join us next Saturday if she's up to it when we will have the Unplugged Canada group uh, talking about their latest gathering and the technologies that they are, are using in their classroom setting. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. We had a great session. And we will be joining next Saturday, the 17th, at the same time. And we will have another fantastic end-of-year session um, while we break for the winter holidays. So enjoy your Saturday and the rest of your weekend. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you for joining us today.